boys came to inform me that there were some policemen downstairs. <coughs> what did they want? Say they had a search warrant. <coughs> to do what? The people were sitting there. They asked, what for? They said uh, they were looking for arms and ammunition. Let them come in. So my, I asked my business officer to go. So they came up and asked them, where is your warrant, search warrant? Brought it. Then they obtained it from the court. Says, Do you know me? They said, no. You don't know me at all? They said, no. So let me introduce myself to you. I have been an active participant in the affairs of Nigeria. For the past six, six years, I have been a commissioner in Midwest State. For nine years, been a minister of information that took over from Tuninauru. I have been a senator. So why do you think that Twice I led a uh, uh, South-South delegation to national conference, both in, in, in 2005 and 2014. I'm 92, going to 92. Do you still believe I have arms and ammunition in this house? Say we are on our duties. We are sent. I said, carry on. So they went down. I was alone sitting down in my parlor, in my bedroom, waiting for them. More than one hour they didn't come up. So one of my boys came to tell me that my secretary, Dorothy Coco, went to the bank and he insisted that they wanted to see her room because she locked her room before she left. So David had to send for her to come from the bank. Opened the door. They went in, searched. Before they do that, they did that. Dr. Gally had arrived. And that was the Gally had arrived. The boy phoned him. So he jumped into his car and he came in. Being a uh, former permanent secretary, he knows so quite a number of people here. And they have been working here all along. So he said, let me phone one of these policemen, officers. So he phoned an assistant inspector general of police by name Cheo, in charge of intelligence. The man said, I, I'm not aware of such a search. Can I speak to the leader of the, of the team? So Gallic then gave the leader I think it's David something that gave him and he spoke in our language. After some time, the boy gave the telephone back to the guy. And they went on to search. We showed that the man they have explained to the man that uh, the order is from the, from above. And he couldn't ask them to go back. So they went on to do their duty. So after searching Dorothy's room, they went to my office, searching. <coughs> they went to the kitchen, searched everywhere in the kitchen. Meanwhile, as I was told, two of them, armed, were standing by the gate. They came in two vehicles, one in locks and one bus. There were some policemen inside, armed policemen inside. The so they came up, they said they want to search my wife's uh, room. He said, my wife, they told him, told them, my wife has gone to Lagos. They said, they, we have to open it. So the boys looked for a spare key, opened it for them. They went in, searched everywhere. Then they came here, searched here, went to the 
uh, to the tyranny room, such it. They wrote their report, they came to the room, said we are sorry, we found nothing incriminating, and we are going back without taking anything out of. Them. They said they want three persons to sign the report. So Ambassador Gary, Mark Macquarie, and your advisor on the Joe Affairs, Dr. Molade, three of them signed. Then three of them signed. So I said, where is the report? Can I have a copy of the report? The ambassador, all of them were insisting. Mark Macquarie, they were insisting. They said, no, only a lawyer can apply for it. But we should allow, we should allow two persons to accompany them to the office so that they will know where the office is and to whom the letter should be addressed to. Meanwhile, my lawyer, Kyle De Ajula, has also this uh, year, but when the girl phoned him, and uh, that's why he was here and done I mean, for a long time. Many other people were coming. They, but at that evening, the police <coughs> came. Yes. So the police came in the night. A delegation of, led by one DIG, AIG followed him. Three commissioners of police, one call, and I think Nigerians have not uh, the comment for the past one week or some this uh, matter. So well, uh, General Lekwood came to visit and said that for everything that happens, either it failed or it succeeds, there are consequences, there are lessons to be learned from it. And I think I was happy that this thing happened. Now, what actually shocked everybody, Your Excellency? Who, who is the informer? They called him uh, that day, whistleblower. Who is he? After reporting the police that same day, they went to the, without any investigation, without knowing where the taxi driver was, they went straight to the court, got a search warrant. By 12.30, they were in my house there. That's how one thing whole thing happened. Now, the next thing they did, that they have sacked the three, they even sent to me that I should send somebody to witness the trial of the policeman. I don't want to do that. And uh, they said they have sacked three inspectors. The ASP, I think they could. Yeah. IG would not be able to tax it. Mm -hmm. So they suspended him. And my immediate reaction was that why make these boys the scapegoat? They took us to their office. My people saw their boss. The boss was in contact with the IG's office. So these boys did not act on their own. So I asked my lawyer to address a petition to Mr. President that this matter has to be investigated because nobody knows what tomorrow is going to be. A situation whereby people will not speak their mind in a country which we call is democratic, is democratic, the democracy being practiced here, when people are no longer allowed to assemble. I said I would have lied. So I wrote a petition to the separate. I also appealed to them. Appealed to me. I said I've accepted it. So nobody should do anything. Yesterday I saw, and it was in the paper today, a publication made full page mm -hmm. in Vanguard by John Elders. Mm -hmm. Signed by people like uh, Eva, Joseph Eva, uh, Titi, Bokazi, 
all of them signed, about ten of them. And I'm very, very happy indeed. So he just came here, singing war songs, dancing. So I said that it was good that they used to say, if it were possible for you to die, come back to see your enemies and your friends. This is what has happened to me. Now I know the jaws are behind me. Nobody will be, be to go to tell them that, ah, who is in black? We deal with some of these boys. Nobody will say so now. They are all ashamed. They now know that touch me, the job people will react. Nigerians will react. The Niger Delta will react. Say, Your Excellency, you're welcome. I know when you hear if my man has not gone, you will be the first to be here. Even in the night, I know you will come. That you received money, you left Urua to come to Abuja to see your son, whether he's well or not. So, uh, to see your, uh, your father, I mean, did very great. May the Almighty God give you, bless you, give you the strength and courage and the wisdom to manage our people, the job people, wherever they are. Make the job members of NNPC. Six of them are from the north. They don't produce any single oil, including the chief of staff, Abakari. One from the southwest, they produce little oil in uh, in Ondo. One from Delta, in the mid uh, south south, and one from southeast. No, from uh, Cross River, John Thomas. So, I have cried out. Perhaps these are some of the things you are point. 55 senior <coughs> managers in NNPC. 36 of them from the north. The remaining 17 or 19 from the south. None to the east. You appoint very senior general managers. 15. 10 of them to the north. 3 to the southwest. 2 to south south. None to the east. And you don't want me to talk about them. That's be nonsense. So, Your Excellency, I'm indeed very happy somehow that this thing has happened. I now know the strength I have behind me. I thought I was fighting alone, but I'm now sure that my people admire me. They appreciate what I'm doing. So I thank the Almighty God that I should give me some more time. I said, when you are 70, that's my slogan. And above, you are at the departure lounge waiting for your body pass. <coughs> Why should you be afraid of anybody? You should fight against injustice. Fight against oppression. Now I'm 91. I have received my body pass. But God said, I've delayed your flight <laughs> for a purpose. <laughs> and that's what I'm doing. So why should I be afraid of anybody? So I want to say big thank you to you.